observed internationally under the theme Building a Solid and Interactive Bridge Between Africa and the World to Accelerate Ending FGM by 2030. UNFPA and UNICEF, alongside stakeholders, engaged the press in recognition of International Zero Tolerance Day for the elimination of female genital mutilation and cutting. UNICEF country representative Sierra Bay Solur Nyanti deliberated on the need to keep FGM and its issues on the spotlight. What we all have been able to do together is ensure that female genital mutilation is a topic that's in the forefront this day, which is set aside to bring us back to the issue of female genital mutilation is the International Zero Tolerance Day for Female Genital Mutilation. And it's a day that um, highlights the need for us all stakeholders to look at what we have done in the area of female genital mutilation prevention and also what requ what's required to be done going forward. She further underlined that fruitful initiatives have been internationally and nationally employed to address the worrisome cultural practice mentioning that the Gambia is not left out as 75 percent of those caught in the country are on the 14th. Since 2008, there's been a global joint program on female genital mutilation and cutting. And about 30 countries are part of that joint program, Gambia being one of them. Because you have about 56 percent of those who are being cut in the Gambia, and that's around 75 percent of your, your population, 56 percent of them are 14 and younger if they are being mutilated and they are suffering the consequences of such, we as partners together need to be working together to ensure that that, that prevalence is reduced. What are we doing about that? UNFP and UNICEF are working together very strongly with you all, with partners around the country, to focus on communication and make sure that people have the right knowledge and skills around why it's important to stop female genital mutilation UNFPS Chief of Operations Kunle Adeni, who mentioned that millions of individuals are at risk to FGM, also enjoined media practitioners and stakeholders at large to fully partake in the struggle to its end. About 40 million people stand at risk of being caught this year. We, are, we, we believe that with the work we're doing and in partnership with the government and people of the Gambia, the change will, will, would really get to the grassroots. Let me once again congratulate the, the people of the Gambia for the ban on, um, on, on, on FGM and child marriage. Um, the ban is legal, it is a law, and you know, it, we believe that it is, it is here to stay. Coming from the floor, participants table in questions, remarks and suggestions geared towards joint solutions to the menace and its perhaps undoable ugly scars. So we know community engagement, the issue of going underground, when people are engaged, they themselves will take appropriate action. This is what we feel is happening in our community, and we think we will do action A, B, and C to be able to address the problem. That is the beauty of community engagement. I think that's something we need to focus on. As I said, we need to do more work together. This Women's Amendment Act 2015 is in English. So I was wondering if you are also going to embark on such projects to make sure that you translate it to the grassroots people in their native languages so that they can also comprehend the nature of the Women's Amendment Act. Speaking again on the matter, the UNICEF country rep stressed the need to utilize effective communicative tools and as such enlighten individuals and communities on the implications of female genital mutilation. Men don't want their girls cut. They don't want to do anything to their daughters that would cause a problem for them down the line, especially as it affects uh, childbearing in the future. But a lot of men had no information. A lot of men didn't know the consequences of FGM. And so what they were doing was basically going forward with a tradition, a practice that they've known over the years, over centuries, is something that's a rite of passage. And in that discussion, they were able to articulate the fact that they would like to be partners to look at how rite of passage can be separated from the actual mutilation. Hailing the government of the Gambia for criminalizing child marriage and FGM, it was unanimously voiced out that more needs to be done so as to keep potential Gambian FGM victims off harm's way. Modubajan reporting for GRTS News.